Okay, I have kind of a cool tutorial for you today. I've been tinkering a lot with Astra and Spectra, which is a kind of like a block builder enhancement for Gutenberg block editor. And inside of Astra, I've been wanting to build a completely custom mega menu. In fact, let me just go ahead and show you what I'm talking about here on Surecart. They have this really nice mega menu, something that expands out pretty much full width, and it has multiple columns with icons and uh, labels with a description. And I was trying to think this through on how to do it, and I realized that it's actually actually pretty difficult, or at least not necessarily intuitive on how to achieve this exact result. So let me walk you through how I figured it out and some of the cool little tricks that I picked up as I was tinkering with it, and that way you can tinker with it yourself and see if you can build a mega menu like this for your site. Now, there are a couple of ways you can do headers in Astra, particularly with the new site builder that we're going to use uh, in a big way as part of this uh, tutorial here. But the general way of applying a menu in Astra works. You go into the uh, customizer, you go to the header builder, and you add your primary menu or whatever menu that you want to add somewhere inside of your header. And that's really all there is to the traditional way of adding your menu. And now we just get to customize it using a couple of Astra's specific tools. So here's where we need to get started. We need to go into appearance menus here on the left-hand side, very traditional WordPress. Come in here and edit your menu. I'm making a new menu by clicking create a new menu so that I can show you from scratch. And perhaps you will want to do this as well. And you can just simply check the box here under menu settings where you want that menu to appear. That gets things rolling for us. Now, if you're doing this on a live site, don't do that. Go ahead and just make the menu first. And in fact, just do this on a staging site in general is probably a good idea um, because you'll be messing up your site menu otherwise. So let's go ahead and get started. I, again, this is the mega menu that we're building as a reference point here. So we have multiple columns and in it, we have these really nicely crafted individual items. So coming back into our, our menu, we can go ahead and we can add a custom link. I think this is the way that I always like to get started. And you can put in whatever URL you want. And then for the link text, we'll just go ahead and put features, click add to menu. Now, just like they have here, features is their top level. And to achieve the mega menu effect, when we expand out this features menu item, we're going to click on Astra menu settings. And then this opens up this little side panel where on the right here, we can toggle on mega menu. This means that whatever falls underneath this features link has the Astra mega menu content capabilities. For our top menu item, this is all that we really need to worry about right now. So we'll just click save changes then close out that side panel. Now that we have our features heading in place, we need to add the content for what falls underneath in this mega menu. And the word content is important in this context because that's something that gets used in the mega menu itself. So to kick things off, we're going to add one item. And this is what I like about this method. There are other methods uh, that are just, I think, much more bulky that make really long menus with using this custom mega menu builder. Um, but I'm gonna show you a new way that I like using the site builder. So let's add our one item here and we'll just call this the features mega menu and we'll add this to menu. And all we have to do is inset this one single item in underneath features, open it up, click Astra menu settings, and here we are going to click on hide menu label and where it says content source, remember the word content, that's key because our content source is actually going to be from a template. Now this is where the magic happens for the rest of this tutorial. We are going to go into, if we hover over Astra here on the left in the WordPress menu and we go to site builder and open that in a new tab. This opens up the new site builder tool that Astra released, which is kind of like a theme builder. If you're familiar with Thrive Theme Builder, which I know a lot of you uh, that follow the channel are, think of like Thrive Theme Builder, but for Astra, Spectra, and Gutenberg. It's, I'm gonna do more tutorials on this because it definitely warrants it. But for now, follow along. We're going to create a new layout and the layout that we're going to choose is a hook. I found that hook works and I've also found that uh, inside post page works, but we'll just choose hook. We'll call this our features mega menu. And I always like to click that eyeball, I don't know why. But then here, now we're just going to build our menu and we're going to use the block builder with Spectra, which is made by the same people that make Astra. And they have a feature called the container and the container is this really magical um, box that allows you to use the flex feature. 
and allows you to build some basically some nice looking designs that you can kind of see shadowed out here. But to get started, we'll just choose a single container. And now with our container selected on the right hand side, we have our contextual block menu. And we're going to scroll down until we see flex properties. And on flex properties, we want to set up our direction as row. So we'll click on row. Okay, so if I open up our list view here, we just have our single container. We're going to add inside of this container, I'm going to open up our blocks menu. And a really easy way to accomplish this shortcut design here is actually using the info box. It's just a pre-built block for Spectra. We'll drop that in. And you can kind of already see we have an icon or an image. You have the option here on the right. We have a label or a headline and then a description. So let's start to use the Spectre options available to us to adjust this. So our side menu here on the right hand side, this is our contextual block menu. If I collapse the first one that was open by default, you can see we have a section for our image and icon, our content, our separator, call to action, and some presets. Let's go ahead and open up our image icon and let's change this position to left of text and title. That achieves that look that we're going for. And instead of an icon, let's change it to image and we can below select our image. I've gone ahead and pre-populated a couple items for us. So let's choose the first one there. That adds our icon. Let's select our text and choose e-commerce. And then let's add a little description, something like that. That gets us at least started. Now we're not done yet. We do need to make some changes. So for our, our text is a little bit too big here. So if we go back on the right hand side and we look for our content section, we do see that we have a title and we can decide whether we want it to be an h1 2 3 4 etc we could just make it paragraph if we wanted to and we can bold that now by default the content both the title and the text here are going to inherit your theme font or typography settings so as you notice that when i went down to our our content section and we found our title the title tag uh, whether i choose paragraph or h3 it's going to inherit whatever font settings i set now, if we go under style though, and we go under title, you can see that we can override those settings. So maybe I wanted to leave it as an H3, but change the size of the font, I can do that. For me, I'm just gonna change it to typography because I don't want my header to pull any heading tags. Since it's in the header, it's not in the content itself. And then I'll go under style and I'll change the typography here. I'll make the font size 16, a little smaller for our navigation. And then Let's go ahead and click out of that and then find our description and our description. Also, we want to override. We want to make that font size 16 as well. Seems to look pretty good. Uh, maybe we could increase the font size if we wanted to on those. Okay, now we have a couple of defaults we need to clean up on. We have, while we're still here in the description with this description drop down, let's go ahead and clear out that 20 pixels from the bottom. That tightens it up a little bit there. Let's go ahead and go back to our title and decide if we like 10 pixels or if we want something a little tighter like five. We'll leave it as 10 for right now. Now, one of the things I've learned as I've started using the block builder more, it's that the spacing that they show here is not necessarily reflective of the spacing that you've designed here. You're only going to see that on the front end. So for now, we'll go ahead and leave that alone and just trust that 10 pixels is enough and we can play with it as we progress. One thing I do want to do though, is I want to go back to style and I want to go to our icon and I do want to add more spacing between the icon and the text. Something like if we go to padding, right, maybe another 10 pixels, maybe five is better. Yeah, let's go with five. And then I want to add a few pixels to the top, probably like there, I'm gonna add like three. That lines up our little icon with our text a little bit more centered than it was. It was a little more towards the top. Now in our list view, because on our container, we remember to set our flex properties to expand out in the row, I can come back to this info box and I can just duplicate it three or four times. I think we were going for four of them, right? So there are the four that we have in a row. And if I were to simply duplicate this container, I've given myself both the four columns and the two rows. So let's go ahead and save that, at least where we're at right now. And let's now go apply what we've just built to our menu. If you remember, we'll come back into our features mega menu that we set up, open up our Astro menu settings, and this is where content source comes into play. So we'll come into our default choice here and change it to template. And now we get to search for pages, posts, and reusable blocks, we'll search for our features mega menu. And here it is, our features mega menu. We will select that, 
click Save Changes, and then don't forget to click out of it and save Menu as well. Now I'll come back here and I've refreshed it. If I hover over Features, ta-da, look what we have. We have the beginnings of a setup of our Mega Menu. Now, a couple of things to note here. First off, our icon, I adjusted it too far. I probably will end up removing those three pixels that I added, and I want to add more space between these two containers. I think the space between the columns is good, but the rows are not. So let's just come back to this tab and let's make that adjustment. With the first container in hand, we'll go to Style, we'll go to Spacing, Let's put some margin on the bottom. Let's put 20 pixels. And now that we've brought it to the front end, if we click update here in the top right, we come back and refresh our front end, you can see that adding that space is now reflected. So this is how I'm going to be evaluating my design moving forward. I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to update them. And then I'm going to refresh to see what we have. And I don't know if you caught that coming back in here. This is actually a pretty good point. Notice that I added 20 to the bottom of margin in this first container, but I had this link clicked, or by default it's always clicked. So it added 20 on all of them. I don't know if you saw that. So I'll zero those out again. I'll uncheck the link and on the bottom add just the 20 to the bottom instead of 20 margin to all sides. Now we can go ahead and duplicate this content container one more time. It gives us our three. And if we come back to here and refresh, we have all three of our rows. Now again, this is just to make something similar to what Surecart has done with theirs. So there's still a few more things we need to do. We need to make these links so that when they're clicked on, they go somewhere. We need to add this hover color effect, which is actually not doable without just a little bit of custom CSS that I'm going to provide you. And I think I want to space things out just a bit more. Now, back inside of our menu with our container selected on the left inside of our list view, if we go on the right hand side under style, and we go to spacing, we can adjust the row gap right here, or rather the column gap. We want to adjust the space between the columns. To do that, we can add pixels here. Let's do something a little dramatic, maybe like 40 pixels. And then to accomplish an equal distance between our columns and our rows, we will come into our margin at the bottom and we will up that to 40 as well. Come back into our navigation and now things are spaced out a lot better. I think it's a lot easier to, to kind of see and you can play around with your spacing until you get it looking however you want. Now we want to make them clickable because we want each of these to be a navigation item. So we're going to select each of our info boxes and this is why I really like the list view because you can expand it out and see everything. But we're going to select our info box and we are going to go over to the right hand side under general call to action here. And our call to action is going to be complete box. And that means anywhere they click in here, whether to the left of the text, or if they accidentally click on an empty space, wherever they click, it's going to link. And we're going to link them over to our e-commerce e page. So I'll just put a slash in there in order to just make that link active. And then I'll just refresh over here. And now you can see this first one, these other ones aren't active, but this first one, my cursor, I'm on a PC. On a PC, my cursor will change to a little hand. So you'll see, it looks like it's recognized this as a link. And that's neat and all, but we want there to be an effect that helps people recognize that they've actually hovered over something clickable. We want something to be a little more interactive. So just like Surecart has here, where if you hover over uh, their info boxes, you have this greenish background. We want to add that same effect to our content. Now to make that hover effect happen, unfortunately it's not built into the block. Let me just go ahead and show you. I go to our info box here and I go to the different sections. There's nothing here about hovering. If I go to style, which is where it would be. Um, for example, if I look at like the description, there's no hover option, the title, there's no hover, nothing for icon, you know, nothing for spacing. So there's really no way to affect hover on an info box, which is a shame. I think I would really love that hover styling to be on everything. We do have styling options for link hovers and, and things like that. But those, those same hover options are not available for our info box. But like I said, with some very simple CSS, which I will include for you inside of the description of this video, or at least right below it, you'll be able to copy this, drop it in and follow the instructions that are coming up next. So with that CSS put into uh, the customizer, again, appearance, customize, and you can just drop it in under additional CSS. We're going to come into our info box and go on the right hand side to advanced. 
and then we're going to go to advanced again and we are going to set additional css classes as and i invented this one i'm actually pretty proud of myself i wrote custom css i don't even know how good it is but i chose mm for mega menu and i put a dash and i put selection right let's verify that here mm section not selection it makes way more sense so our mega menu section we defined our info box as a mega menu section that was the logic in my brain that seemed to make sense at the time so i'll update that and then inside of this custom css you're going to notice there's a background color and it has a hex code now it has a few more digits than a normal six digit hex code right that's because the last two are the opacity or transparency i always get the two mixed up but basically how like see-through the color is that you're applying. So right now, as you can see, it's my brand blue with a 20. That means 20% opacity. If I were to change that to, or if I were to just get rid of that, let's just get rid of the 20% opacity. And I hover over the features menu and I go over to that link we added, you would see that it completely replaces and well, it doesn't replace it. It just covers the whole background in a color that doesn't seem to work. So instead we're going to put that 20 back. There we go. And then if I hover over features, you can see it adds this nice, just interactive color, or I could change this hex code to something like the sure cart colors. And there we go. We've started to create the effect of the sure cart coloring. Okay. We're almost done. A couple little tweaks I want to make and show you again, just how to get this just right. You can see I've added a border radius to the hover effect. It uh, rounds the corners with eight pixels. You can adjust that however you want. Uh, but also you'll notice that as I hover over the spacing, is not quite where I would want it to be. There's not enough spacing between the uh, hover effect and the icon. If I go back to like here, you can see they've got some padding all around the element. So I wanna add that into ours. I'll come into each of these items and I'll go to style spacing and our spacing here, I'm thinking maybe 10. And this is a case where it is a good idea to have that link checked so it does all of them at once. Update that, come back over here. Don't forget to hit publish on your customizer. I like to refresh and preview within the customizer as I'm playing with CSS. I find that it helps. And now we only applied it to our one, but that's all that matters. If I hover over our menu item now, there's a nice little bit of 10 pixels all around each of the edges. So there we go. That is how I figured out how to create the mega menu that Surecart uses. There are multiple ways to accomplish this. I think there are. I've, I found at least one other way that's just a lot more complicated and uses more of this menu system here. But what you would want to do now is just add more options. Like we have features and I could add how it works and then just have that be a normal link. I could then add use cases. And then all I would do is make sure that my use cases menu item was under master menu settings set as a mega menu as well. And then I would proceed on with the rest of my menu. So again, I hope that was helpful. I've been having a lot of fun tinkering with Astra and Spectra and finding out what's possible. It's a super lightweight theme and it's not really a page builder. I think they use the word page builder, not quite. It's just a kind of like a, an addition to the Gutenberg blocks. Um, but there's a lot of things that you can, that you can do. And I've been rebuilding my main Combology site using it just as a challenge to help me learn how to use more tools. So expect more tutorials like this. And if there are particular tutorials or things that you would like to see, by all means, I always like to hear what you would like to see in a tutorial on my channel. But that wraps up everything here from this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one.